You're listening to The Voice of Russia, and today we're discussing the American elections. The most powerful country on earth will select its next president in just four months' time. The race looks set to be between the incumbent, Barack Obama, and the presumptive Republican candidate, Mitt Romney. Romney has been coming under fire in recent weeks for failing to reveal his financial records. But the latest polling shows the race is a dead heat. So does that mean the faltering US economy is a bigger issue than Romney's personal finances and one that voters are blaming President Obama for? With me to discuss these topics and more is an eminent panel. In the studio, we have Tim Stanley, a historian and a writer for the Daily Telegraph, Robert Barnage, a Republican voter and a lecturer in the School of Law at the University of Reading, James Thackeray, He's a Democratic voter, a human rights activist, and the author of three novels, including The Book of Kings, which had The Economist comparing his style to Tolstoy. And down the line, we have Professor Michael Cox, Professor of International Relations at the London School of Economics and the Associate Fellow at the America's Programme in Chatham House, a prominent think tank here in London. If I might start with you, Tim Stanley, Romney has been getting a lot of criticism in the last few weeks, but yet his polling position is holding out. Why is that, do you think? That's because elections come down to two things. One, the judgment that the public passes over the incumbent, and two, whether or not they think the guy running against him is someone appropriate to replace him. So if you start with Obama, the economy is stagnating. It's not recovered from the recession quite as fast as we hoped. The jobs reports have been bad. And despite all of that, he's actually spent a vast amount of money trying to turn things around, and it has failed. A Rasmussen poll yesterday showed that 20, only 28% of Americans think that their country is headed in the right direction. And historically, it's very, very difficult for an incumbent president to overcome these terrible figures and get re-elected. So then the public turns their attention to the alternative, Mitt Romney. And whilst they have issues with his personality, uh, the fact that he's incredibly wealthy, the fact that he's a Mormon, and there's still a great deal of prejudice, uh, particularly with amongst the evangelical community towards Mormons. Despite all of these things, they look at a man who has incredible business experience, someone who has executive experience, and someone who, unlike Barack Obama, seems to understand how private enterprise works and has a record of creating jobs. So I think if we can extract, and this will happen in October or November, if we can extract all the silly issues of personality then I think the public will face a simple choice between, frankly, an incompetent failed administration and a competent challenger. And I think they will go for Romney. James Thacker, are you slightly worried by the fact that you've had all these attacks on, on a very vulnerable part of, of Mitt Romney's um, uh, appeal, and yet they don't seem to have been decisive in, in pushing Barack Obama ahead of him? I think it's nonsense to talk about the polls. It's far too early in this election. Um, Republicans uh, bring haloed ricks of lies which they pile onto the opposition. Uh, we've just heard a batch of them. And um, Barack Obama is such a smart politician that uh, he and um, Axelrod, all of these people who went through Republicans' attack under Carter and Clinton, uh, they keep their whole program off the, off the agenda. None of us here can possibly say with any authority what the uh, Democrats have in store for the Republicans. Um, so, I, I mean, all of that stuff. I mean, they cannot, the economy, for Christ's sake, uh, Clinton balanced the economy. Uh, Bush launched the most monstrous errors of a judgment in the history of this planet by invading these countries, spent trillions of dollars, ran up a gigantic debt. Uh, and uh, Obama has saved the automobile industry in the face of this. He saved the economy. He's bailed out the banks and all their bonus people and derivatives crowd, which is what uh, Mitt Romney represents. And so I think Obama has done, had a, first, a great first four years, and I don't think the American electorate is so stupid as to follow these, these piles of lies and advertising and everything else. And Mr. Adelson out in Las, Las Vegas with his gangling gang, you know, gangsters in Macau financing him. I mean, I think he just looks like a, something like you might see in Russia, an oligarch, for example. I think the Russians must be watching this and wondering whether they want to have oligarchs or liberals in the future in their country. Is the, jobs, is the Labor Department's jobs report a falsehood or a lie? By, by, placed out by the Republicans? Uh, the, the Congress has completely stalled every attempt to start up so jobs programs. We would have had a Roosevelt-style uh, program and created masses of jobs. Republicans refused this down the line consistently right from the beginning. Well, the Democrats Ocon controlled both houses and the presidency for they, two years. The first two years, not the second two years. The first two years, we had to deal with your messes in Afghanistan and Iraq, and uh, which resulted in hundreds of thousands of dead people. You haven't and, left Afghanistan. Well, we haven't been able to leave there because Obama cleverly um, knows that the army, our military, has paid a hell of a price for Vietnam. We've been losing wars ever since Korea. 
And I think he wants to protect the military as much as possible, let them have a little bit of sway in the way they get out of there. It uh, hasn't worked very well, and I think the military is back down on that. We're not getting out. So we're still in Afghanistan, and debt is still rising under this presidency. So in fact, he's Bush part two. He's not really hope and change at all. Uh, no, this Congress is Bush part two. <laughs> if, if I can, just can we let Robert Barney <laughs> yeah. Thank you. If I can just uh, come in here. I think the problem is that we have an individual, and you started your uh, introduction uh, by, ta by talking about uh, releasing uh, Romney's uh, tax returns. Well, how about Obama releasing his academic transcripts? He's never done that. Uh, Perhaps presidential candidates have done that. And what is he hiding? Um, second question is. Uh, Sorry, what, what do you what do you expect I'm, I'm, to find? I, you said silly what, business of personalities. I grow up with that. What, what are we worrying about that? For? I, I, it's a matter of transparency. And, and if what I can, do you expect to find in his academic transcripts that will be so damaging? Do you? Think? I, I have no idea. I, I haven't seen them. I mean, uh, Bush released his. I believe John Kerry released his. People want to see them. So I, I would say it them? doesn't matter. We've had long enough to judge whether or not he's an idiot. And if I can, well, not, not so much an idiot, but I think... think well, he is? <laughs> no, not at all. No, I'm, I'm, if we can talk about substance... I went to Harvard, so, too. <laughs> ...so much uh, pejor pe pejorative. Um, I, I would say that President Obama, by the individuals he has grown up with and, and associated with, is, is, is essentially hostile to the free market. I mean, just the other day he said, if you've got a business, uh, you didn't build that, somebody else made that happen. How is that supposed to help... Uh, encourage private private investors, uh, startups, entrepreneurs. It's going it, 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 He is essentially hostile to the free market. He has taken over with his Obamacare a large sector of the United States uh, economy, and that is not good for a recovery. In fact, it will stall, if not uh, decrease, uh, any growth in the future. If particularly if he's uh, second administration. Uh, Obama's Obamacare is far less draconian than Richard Nixon's health care policy. Can I bring in Professor Michael Cox? Obama is opposed to private enterprise. Do you think that's a, a bad statement? Well, firstly, I'm glad I'm not in that studio. It sounds like they're going to come to blows any, any moment now. Look, of course he's not hostile to, to market economics. I mean, but he faced a situation in 2007 and 2008 that the market had failed. Market fundamentalism had, as it's called, had led to the, to the disaster of 2007 and 8, which we have still not yet recovered from. So decisive intervention by the state, through the state, by government, dare we say, was absolutely essential to, to in a sense, to, to, save, to save the economic system from its own problems. So I don't think it's either for or against the market. It is a question that to save market economics in the broad sense, more and more government and government spending and quantitative easing and all the rest, was absolutely essential. And, you know, Bernanke, who was hardly regarded as a Bolshevik, and I think has pursued policies not too dissimilar to those which would have been pursued anyway uh, by the Bush, just to save the system. The other thing I, I would say is that much of this is going to come down to political science, namely, who is going to vote for whom and why. And on that basis, it still seems to me that people won't judge Obama to be an idiot. I think he's one of the least idiotic presidents who's held that post for many years, by the way. I think it's going to come down to people's interests. Who will vote for Obama and why? Who will vote for Romney and why? And on that basis, the Obama president, the Obama administration still has lots to play for. The Hispanics, the undecided, uh, those who really still don't fully trust, to be perfectly honest, still don't fully trust the Republicans. You're listening to The Voice of Russia, and today we're discussing the American elections. I'm joined here in the studio by Tim Stanley. He's a historian and a writer for the Daily Telegraph. Robert Barnage, a Republican voter and lecturer at the School of Law at the University of Reading. And by James Thackeray, a Democratic voter and a novelist. And down the line, we have Professor Michael Cox, Professor of International Relations at the London School of Economics. Robert Barnage, how would you respond to the idea that sort of, um, there was a sort of crisis in American capitalism in 2008 and it needed sort of government help to get bail it out? Look, government is not the solution. Government is the problem. It always has been. And governments don't stimulate economies, uh, stimulate uh, rebounding economies. Well, they, 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 have no, they have money that they take from private individuals. It's simply about redistributing the wealth. That's all he has done from party A to party B. And that does not mean these stimulus jobs. The, these are vacuous jobs. They're not creating uh, uh, private uh, pr growth. They're not creating growth. They're simply recycling uh, existing jobs. Can we just turn away from this and go to your own candidate, Mitt Romney, the person we assume will be your candidate, Mitt Romney? Mm. Um, why isn't he pulling clear of, of uh, Obama in some of the economy? Well, I, I, I think, uh, you know, the, in the 92 campaign, there was a, the, uh, Clinton had the expression, it's the economy stupid. And uh, 
I think, look, I think at this, at this, it's July, I think we have to be very careful looking at polling. It's a lot can happen between now and now and then. I, I believe at this time in uh, 1980, uh, Jimmy Carter was well ahead of uh, President Reagan. So I think there can be, you know, there'll be very many uh, political uh, events that'll be come between now and certainly the, 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 the conventions and also obviously the election. So I think now, you know, whether or not you're ahead by 10 points, 15 points, it's nothing to be uh, secure with. Uh, Tim Stanley, you're vaguely of the right. Um, do you find uh, Mitt Romney an impressive character? I want to say very quickly, first of all, earlier, I did not call Barack Obama an idiot. I was just saying uh, that we had long enough to work out whether or not he was a genius uh, without having to see his academic transcripts. Um, <laughs> do I think Romney is an impressive character? Uh, this, uh, this is a guy who politically has rebounded. Uh, he ran for the Senate once, lost, became governor in a very um, uh, cons- uh, d- democratic state, uh, lost the nomination in 2008, won it in 2012. The impression one gets is someone who never gave up. He's an incredibly professional, driven, hard-headed person. This is someone who, in his family vacations, holds the Romney Olympics, and his kids can compete. And famous in the family medals. vacations, has his dog on the roof of his car. Well, that's true. And the part of the problem is that with this incredibly driven personality, you have this prep school wonkishness, this strange detachment, this inability to be emotional, that I, I think does turn off a lot of people, and they look for that kind of character in their presidents. But I think what people look at him and associate him with, and this is, this is why he won Massachusetts, is they look at him and they think, I know he's talking conservative, but I don't believe he is a conservative. And if you look at the data from when he captured the governor's mansion in Massachusetts, that's what he managed to do. He spoke actually a very conservative game, but voters went for him because they told pollsters, we don't believe him. And I think that's why the Republicans chose him in 2012, because they recognize that the, the public is not quite as conservative as the Republican base is, and they wanted someone who would be nominally and philosophically conservative, but who could reach out to independents and swing Democrats. Uh, if I, I mean, I think the, the exact opposite. If you look at the McCain campaign, I think he was a complete failure. And the only thing that energized that campaign was Sarah Palin, energizing the base and ensuring that they come out. Uh, James. I'd like to come in on that because I'm a New England preppy. And um, uh, the face of, of Mick Romney, when you see him on, on the media, is a face that to many people will uh, speak to them of, of American traditions that go very profound, going back to the Puritan revival. Um, and I, I think your comment about personalities being irrelevant is, is relevant to what we're saying. And uh, Mick's comments were very, very useful. But actually, I would like to have heard him more to talk more about the, uh, the position we occupy in American economics at the moment. I mean, the Greenspan approach, the Larry Summers approach. Uh, there is a very serious question hanging over Europe and America about the future of capitalism. And Romney represents a kind of capitalism which uh, is closely identified because of the way he operated at Bain. And I think I assume this is why the Democrats are going for that. That speaks to derivatives, it speaks to bonuses, it speaks to the 1% having, uh, having a right to the majority vote. And, you know, I don't think Mitt Romney has an inkling how to get the majority vote on the side of the 1%. And uh, to the extent that David Brooks in today's or yesterday's IHT, David Brooks is his big supporter, big Republican, was saying uh, Mitt Romney has not articulated Republicanism as it has to be now. Mitt Romney speaks to another. I mean, I know these people. I went to school with them. He, he, he has not said one word that I've heard that actually speaks to where we are now in America. America is going to have to go through some kind of sea change. And that's what Obama represents in many, many ways. He's a transitional, transformational character. And I don't think Americans on a visceral level have any problem understanding that about him. Though I think there's going to be a problem in the election. I mean, I agree with you. I, I don't something. necessarily disagree with that. But I think in the same way that Romney has had difficulties articulating the philosophy of the 1%, I don't think Obama's succeeded in articulating the philosophy of the, of the Occupy movement, if that really is what he stands for. Because you look at polls and for that. we look at polls and the only, they're the only snapshot we do have, you see consistent public opposition to Obamacare, to, to those aspects of Obamacare that would compel people to buy insurance, which is at the very heart of this incredibly social democratic enterprise. Yes, but in his first two years you were talking about, he went right to the center. He took on the Clinton a DLC approach to occupying the center, and the business community liked what he was doing. Yeah. They liked like the saving of the, the, I mean, that was, a, you know, Mitt Romney has been, I mean, if that weren't enough to bring Mitt Romney down, I don't know what is, saying that we're not going to support industries that are in trouble. I mean, there's an example. I mean, it's incredible. I watch Ford going up in the stock market every day. It wouldn't have existed if it hadn't been for Obama. Why should, why should uh, private enterprises be bailed out? I see no reason why my taxpayers 
money should be used to bail out uh, private industries. You would want to buy bankrupt. Mercedes Benz's the rest of your life. I, I think they should go bankrupt. I don't know if you watch the stock market. I do. It's, it, Ford has been going up there. The, uh, there's been a lot of support, um, and they're selling well. Oh yeah, it's Ford's incredible. doing fine now. But Chrysler was bailed out seventy nine eighty. Chrysler has been in trouble again. Chrysler has been in trouble for decades. You can bail something out, and of course, its stock's going to go up if you arrange a deal. But that I don't. I don't actually think that the economy is going to be such a big issue when we come to this, because I think Obama will succeed in in in, in putting a, Mitt Romney in a very difficult position in terms of his concept of capitalism. Can David I bring Brown. in Michael oh, Cox down the line because he's going to get left out because he's not in the studio. The idea that sort of um, American capitalism is in crisis is this historically is that is it in particular crisis now or is it sort of always in crisis like this really? No, it's not always in crisis. I mean, it wasn't in crisis for the large part of the post-war period or for periods before the First World War. But I mean, capitalism is capitalism and it goes through periodic moments of ups and downs the only issue is now that the down that it's in since 2007 is a very deep down and it's a very deep down on this side of the atlantic as well in other words what i would call the western model of, of capitalism although there's, there's complications in that the western model is facing some severe problems now it is perfectly reasonable to argue that governments don't create jobs but the only problem is it isn't true World War II got the United States out of the Depression. That was done by government spending. Uh, the largest part of the American economy, one of the biggest parts of the American economy, is, is the military or the military-industrial complexes. That's government spending. People who work in federal programs, work in state government, those are federal programs. Much of the research and development done in the United States is done first and foremost with underpinning government spending. And I, I what I find, as a non-American, if I might put it like this, is an extraordinary debate between government is the problem or government is the solution. And I, I don't think that is the debate. Unfortunately, that's where the debate now seems to lie in, the, in this upcoming uh, presidential. It seems a full, it's a false dichotomy. It's a totally false dichotomy. Tim Stanley's been dying to get in for a few I minutes. Bet. Professor, in the immediate aftermath of the Second World War, uh, President Truman cut government spending by about two-thirds. Um, sure. If you go back over the last hundred years, Kai Pleasan has been in periodic crises, and the track record of a free market approach, turning the recession around quickly, is a lot better than the track record of a liberal approach. So if you compare the recession of the early 20s, in which Harding's government, mm. you know, Andrew Mellon, basically cuts taxes and cuts spending, America is out of that recession within a couple of years. If you compare that to Roosevelt's approach during the, the, the New Deal, you get a recession which carries on for a decade and is only rescued by the Second World War. We can, we can also compare the way that um, Kennedy dealt with uh, the, the slowing down of the economy in the late 50s. What does he do? He has a massive tax cut. You get the 60s boom. So consistently, historically, I'm afraid it has been the free market approach. It's been Romney's old-fashioned style of robber baron capitalism that does get the economy moving. Well, I, I, I think there's a debate to be had there. Now, obviously, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go along with what you've just argued. I think there's a debate to be had. Let me, however, bring in an international point here. While this debate is going on inside the United States about free market capitalism versus more and more government or, or state intervention, which I think has been absolutely essential to prevent a depression, by the way, in the United States, I really think this is the case. Uh, whoever would have been in power would have had to take massive government interventionary strategies in order to prevent a new depression rather than what we've got which is not a depression but putting it in international context <clears throat> while free market capitalism if you want to call it that has been going through this really really quite drastic downturn both on both sides of the atlantic state capitalism and it's particularly chinese variant has been doing pretty well and i think this is also should be part of the debate about where America is going to be over the next 5, 10, or 15 years. Who can articulate in this, in this in, in, in parochial discussion going on inside the United States, though an important one, who can articulate a vision which can compare and contrast and deal with the, the issue of an emerging China? Because this is not just a small change in the international relations. This is one of the greatest challenges well, maybe, uh, to the maybe. Western model that has existed for the last 50 years. Probably more important, possibly, than even the Soviet Union. You're listening to The Voice of Russia, and today we're discussing the American elections. I'm joined here in the studio by Tim Stanley. He's a historian and a writer for the Daily Telegraph. Robert Barnage, a Republican voter and lecturer at the School of Law at the University of Reading. And by James Thackera, a Democratic voter and a novelist. And down the line, we have Professor Michael Cox, Professor of International Relations at the London School of Economics. So we'll move on to foreign to policy now. James Thackeray, what do you have to respond to that? Can I just add, add to that, Mick, that um, 
there was a certain amount of China scare thing going on. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Chinese economy was the largest economy in the world before the op first Opium War. Uh, it, it has always loomed very large, and um, uh, that comment. Uh, so, I mean, your comment about America being the most powerful country in the world, it's not, it hasn't been the most powerful country in the world for some time. Um, no, it's consumers are probably But, I mean, the, Mar the Marshall right. Plan, um, I don't think Truman cutting the budget necessarily. I mean, obviously, we're not at war any longer. We're going to be cutting the budget. Um, but uh, people are sitting around in Wall Street watching Bernanke every day to see if there's going to be an intervention in the economy because mm. it's needed to have happen. And, uh, you know, the economies are run on growth. And growth is, at the moment, seen to be something that should be coming from Germany in terms of the Eurozone. And it should be coming from the, the banks and the, and the World how Bank. How many and the bailouts national... and how much quantitative easing, easing do we have to go through? <laughs> Sorry, can we move it on from the economic around? argument, which we've already done, I think, now to death? Um, you want to come yeah, in on foreign a, policy? Just a very, no, well, just a very quick uh, point. If uh, Romney runs as McCain, he loses. If, uh, if he runs as Obama light, he loses. What he needs to do and what the American people need is they need a clear choice between Obama and Romney. Romney needs to run to the center right and if I can, and I think he, what he needs to do is take up the anti-government uh, mantra just which, which saw the Republicans make huge gains to the Tea Party in 2010. But you wanted to talk about foreign policy. Um, how well, would... I, well, my concern is that uh, Obama seems to have done uh, everything he possible to throw uh, our allies under the bus. He returns the Churchill's bust. He throws uh, Mubarak under the bus. The Muslim Brotherhood is now in power. Well, sorry, what would you have done in Egypt that was different then? Well, I, I think you probably wait until there's a presidential election, which I think was going to be held in September, rather than sort of run our... Uh, you, you can't set a precedent, and of course he's done this with Israel as well, you can't set a precedent in which you... in returning the Churchill bust. You can't set a precedent in which you throw our allies under the bus. Um, now the Muslim Brotherhood is in power, and that's not a very, a very pleasant organization. You can read the Hamas charter. Hamas, and, and, and he, Hamas is an arm of the Muslim Brotherhood. I, this, this, I is, this is gobbledygook. I mean, the, the Arab world sees us as you, you, Israel's sole ally and supporter and everything. George Bush Sr. told Sir George Bush Jr. that if he split with Israel on any subject at all, he'd be out of office. Uh, he made the Cairo speech. Uh, the Iran thing went the wrong way. He hasn't been able to do the Cairo speech. Hillary Clinton did indeed want to get uh, Frank Wisner, who's something of an idiot, I mean, uh, if you want to talk about idiots, uh, to go in and support Mubarak, uh, and he made that not happen. So he showed himself loyal to the Cairo speech. He's running immense political risk in doing this. And I think it's something very important for America that he should be doing it. I think it's part of Barack Obama's world leadership. He's our first world president in the history of the republic, I would say. And, um, you know, we haven't yet to see how Egypt's going to work out. I mean, if you hate democracy, why are you hating democracy? Bush wanted to go put democracy into the area. So <laughs> Bush wanted democracies to spring up in all these areas because of our engagement. Hamas now you don't want democracy? Party. Muslim Party, Muslim Brotherhood, the Hamas, they're not democratic They parties. haven't yet taken to total, complete control of that situation. Well, they've taken control of Gaza Strip, I've and that's not a democracy. I've heard Egypt Strip. Can we just have Tim Army. Stanley come in? Do you, can I just ask a question? Yeah. Do you think that uh, foreign policy under a uh, Romney presidency would be very different from Obama's? No, I don't. Uh, it might be a little more uh, loudly pro-Israeli, but I don't think it would be terribly different. If you look at the polls, the one thing the public say, uh, they do rate Obama very highly on his foreign policy, and that's not just because he killed bin Laden. And in fact, I, I personally would say I, I rate him quite highly on foreign policy because I think you have uh, liberal idealism tempered by realism in a way that we haven't yet seen before, and, and it's been successful but ruthless. Attacking Iran. Uh, well, he went, uh, well, Romney might do that. Well, what I want to say out of Obama is, is the way he's moved foreign policy is he's moved away from the, I, the grand strategy idea of the war on terror, that we must fight everything everywhere, including with troops on the ground. And he's moved instead towards policing operations and towards tactical strikes with drones and things like that. And the genius of that approach is while innocent people still die, fewer Americans do. So it gets the job done. My worry with Romney is from his rhetoric is that we see more of a Bush-style approach to the war on terror. And as a result of that, you cannot rule out war with Iran. And Republican operatives, whenever I speak to them, always privately say, we'd like war with Iran. And it's, it's, a, it's a troubling can, aspect can I, of the Can GOP. I add a technical... No, no, sorry, we have a Republican operative here. Can you... Oh, actually, them? I'm not affiliated with the Republican no, Party. Uh, Republican <laughs> support of that, so. Um, do you think war with Iran would be would be inevitable if Romney came in power? It's not about inevitable. It's a matter of what, why Iran, w with the uh, they're trying to bring in the hidden Iman. I mean, this is a, a the theocratic, very dangerous regime. So I think we can hardly say that uh, uh, you know Iran is uh, Switzerland and that it doesn't pose a threat. 
to the United States and in particular to Israel. And we should do everything we can, everything we can in our power to support Israel. There are technical things here that you're taking, not taking into account. Um, we have bunker buster weaponry, which is capable of the Israelis that were saying originally go 200 feet down. The Iranian emplacements are 200 feet down. They would splatter on the surface. They haven't proved effective. That is why the Israelis are trying to maneuver us into an early attack when we would have been using our weaponry. Uh, that has been denied them. If we were to attack Iran, I mean, it would probably be 30,000 sites from the Gulf seat. Uh, and they would of the Gulf Fleet, and we would not be able to do anything but uh, destroy their surface emplacements. And we would, uh, we've already inflamed Iran from Indonesia to Morocco. We would be faced with, uh, bin Laden would get his wish. He'd get his uh, caliphate. Well, I think the Israelis have been very effective in targeted uh, strikes on Syrian uh, reactor and also in Iraq, so we're not quite sure. Professor Cox, can I bring you in? Um, oh. Just one subject I want you to talk about. If there was a Romney presidency, how would it affect relations with Russia? He has been quite critical of the, of the Russian leadership. Firstly, I mean, one should know I mean, my view is that Russia's importance now should not be overestimated. Um, China's is so much more important. And, and, when, and by the way, one of the successes of this administration, I think going from what Bush had already built on, is actually recognizing the importance of Asia and China as really the, you know, if like the, the new growth hub of the, of the world economy for the next 10 or 15 years. And although I think the term Asia pivot is a bit problematic for all sorts of reasons, I think Obama has been successful. And could I just make another point? I think it's very interesting to hear one of your speakers earlier say how successful Obama has been on foreign policy, because in in a sense, the Republican you know a Republican advantage has always been we can do the foreign policy and national security better than the Democrats. And I think one of the reasons, again, why I, I think probably Obama might edge it in the elections in November, is because the Republicans cannot grab him on foreign policy. And I think this is going to be a great strength as he goes into November. Now, going back quickly on the Russia question, there's lots of problems to do with Russia, as we know, on human rights issues, all sorts of other questions. Uh, and, and, and Russia's behavior in the, in the P5 of the UN uh, on a whole bunch of other issues, including Syria, which the US and the UK and mm -hmm. France don't like. Nonetheless, Russia, although it may not be terribly important increasingly in, in the world, it is still a nuclear power. It is still an energy power. And I think, frankly, Romney will be probably as realist as indeed Obama has been when it comes to dealing with countries such as Russia and indeed countries such as China. That's pretty much all we have time for. Can I just finish by asking you who you think will win and why? Well, I think if the choice is between capitalism and socialism, then Romney wins. <laughs> Uh, socialism, my God, <laughs> absurd. Um, you know, these labels really don't stick, and Obama will slip out of them very neatly. I mean, he's so, so adept. He'll be so strong in the last month. Briefly, uh, if you he's, can, please. He's, he's our greatest international president in the history of the Republic and maybe our most brilliant president ever, and uh, I think Americans aren't so stupid they won't vote for him. The economy is bad. Uh, Obama's leadership has largely been shown to fail domestically, and Mitt Romney not only is from a traditional staple of republicanism that the voters identify with, according to the polls, but also he doesn't look like he would press the button. He looks sane. So it's not a difficult decision to throw out Obama and elect him, and for that reason, narrowly, I'd say Romney will win. Professor Cox? I'd say narrowly, but the other way around. I think Hispanic voters... Uh, are going to make a huge difference in this election, and the Republicans have blown it uh, in many, many ways with Hispanic voters on the immigration issue. I think that will be the swing. I think Obama will win it. Thank you very much. I've been talking to Tim Stanley, a historian and writer at the Daily Telegraph, Robert Barnage, a Republican voter and a lecturer in the School of Law at the University of Reading, James Thackera, a Democratic voter and novelist, and Professor Michael Cox of the LSE. Thank you all very much. <laughs>